This is Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related, and today we're going to have a bit of a discussion topic surrounding where Stadia is headed in 2021. I actually feel like it's going to be an extremely interesting year, especially if last year is anything to base it off of. You see, Stadia has managed to come a really long way in just a year's time. In fact, if we just look back at where we were about a year and a couple months ago, it'd be pretty insane to see the stark difference of where Stadia was and where it's at now. To put things into perspective, when Stadia initially launched, there was no messaging, there was no family share, there was no achievement system. Full Android support wasn't a thing, iOS support wasn't a thing, the Chrome browser playing 4K wasn't a thing. Even Stadia exclusive features weren't a thing. There was no stream connect, no state share, no crowd play, there was no YouTube direct streaming. And that's just scratching the surface, but I do think you get the picture now. It's just crazy to look back and see how much Stadia has gained over its first year. But more important than that, it actually paints a pretty good picture and description of what we may see change in this upcoming second year. First up, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. I think one of the most obvious things that's probably going to be happening this year is parity across all versions of Stadia. Now if you happen to be confused about what I'm going on about, it's pretty much that different versions of Stadia have access to different features. For example, small things such as pairing a Stadia controller can only be done through the Android app. It would be very nice to be able to do that sort of thing through your Chrome browser or Chromecast device. And while we're on topic about Chromecast devices, it would be extremely welcome if we could actually use it to shop around and make purchases. Now to be very clear, none of the stuff I'm talking about here is really that big of a deal, but they are pretty important to have. As a reminder, it's things like this that really make a platform feel whole. After all, the dream of cloud gaming is being able to play the way you want to play no matter the device without any restrictions, and those little details really can be restricting at times. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section below, but I do believe that at this point in time, there still isn't any sort of voice chat for Android users. But like I said, this is probably one of the most predictable things to happen. I'm absolutely sure Google is working on this and we've seen proof of it through data mined info. But what about the non-easy predictions? The stuff that we may see that may actually blow our minds. After all, this is a cloud platform. We've seen hints of it drop here and there over this past year. Stuff like state share, stream connect, and crowd play are pretty awesome. That being said, I'm sure what little we have seen of those features are pretty much in the testing phase as it is. I'm certain we'll continue to see these features evolve over time. For example, Krata launched with the state share beta, but apparently Hitman 3 is launching with full state share support. What that means, we don't really know at this point in time, but I'm sure that the change in wording probably means that it may be more akin to what we initially saw during Stadia's unveiling than what we got with Crater. At least, I'm hopeful that's the case, because I actually think Hitman would be the perfect game to showcase that sort of feature. I can totally see the Stadia community making challenges for others to beat and sharing that challenge through a link for everyone to try out. That's just plain awesome. And I would be dumb not to mention it that as someone who makes videos on YouTube, it would be a very cool and easy way to interact with you all who are watching this video. I'm really hoping that's the case with Hitman 3, but even if it isn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see that full on sort of implementation happen this year. I say this because I think Google Stadia is finally at a place where it meets most people's expectations for what any gaming platform should have. And what that means is that it's about time we start to see some of those features start getting implemented that make it stand out. Another great example of what I'm talking about was a feature that was also shown off when Stadia was first announced, and that was the ability to play split screen through two streams. And that would be such an awesome marketing point for Stadia. Suddenly, some single player only games that support co-op through online could be played locally on couches. It would be like a renaissance for local cooperative play, 
Obviously, each game would have to support this themselves, but it would just be such an awesome sight to see. Some of my fondest gaming memories were from me playing games locally with friends. Games like GoldenEye, Power Stone, Mario Kart, Pokemon Stadium. All these games were just a blast to play together right next to each other. It would actually be pretty hilarious to see an online-only platform actually bring people close together to play next to each other once again. I'm sure there's some sort of ironic twist there. Let's put the features to a side for a second, because there is another very important thing I want to see change this year, and that's the UI. Now, we've already seen a few changes happen on the Chrome browser side of things, but honestly, there still needs to be some more changes there. It's certainly not the most intuitive way for checking your game library, especially when you own close to 100 games. Additionally, the Chrome browser isn't the worst offender here. Let's talk about the Chromecast Ultra, because that UI really needs some work. Once again, I'm sitting at about 100 games on Stadia, and scrolling through that Chromecast Ultra UI one at a time to find a specific game is pretty much unbearable. And hold up, before some of you start typing on your keyboards telling me just to cast the game through my Android phone, I do. But that's not really the point here. You see, if Google really only wanted you interfacing with the Chromecast Ultra through your Android phone, they would have made that happen, but they decided to include a user interface. Now, I do have a a pretty good feeling that we'll see some sort of update happen, especially once Stadia gets full-on support on the new Google TV Chromecast device. But if that does end up happening, it'll be extremely interesting to see how they treat the other user interfaces since Stadia is accessible through so many devices at once. But now let's move over to the last point I want to discuss here, and it's a point I'll probably discuss further in its own video because I could really go on about a lot here. It's arguably the most important factor for Stadia, and that's the games. You see, I'm a very firm believer in the statement, content is king. We've seen it happen again and again, no matter what device or platform we're talking about. In fact, we saw a bit of its effect happen with Stadia and the release of Cyberpunk 2077. That game alone brought so many eyes to Google Stadia, and rightfully so because the port of the game happened to be one of the better ones. But at the end of the day, that's just one game, and that sort of effect will only happen during its release period. Google needs to secure other heavy hitters to keep this momentum going. Going. The fact that we know games like FIFA and Madden are making their way is really good to hear, but if we're being honest, they're also pretty delayed. So much so that I think many people in the community either want a heavy discount or just to give us the next one in the series closer to the launch date. But aside from that, I'm very sure Google is aware that they need more heavy hitters because that ultimately will sell the platform to more users. Not just having major new releases like Cyberpunk, but well-established yearly franchises like Call of Duty. This is something that I'm sure Google is well aware of and is working on in the background. I'm sure we'll get some pretty big games coming out in 2021, but what those games are, well, that's anyone's guess. We already know of a few coming out this year, and we're starting it off pretty well with Hitman 3, but I'm super excited to see what else comes later down the road. But all in all, I'm super excited to see Stadia grow as a platform this brand new year, and I can't wait to see what type of features, games, and announcements we get. I'm sure it'll be an exciting year, and one that will grow the Stadia community larger than ever before. Either way, that's all I have to say about today's topic. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out. And if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. Today's end of video message is going to be me asking you for what you expect out of Stadia in 2021. Be it a game, feature, or any other sort of announcement, let me know in the comments section below as I'm really curious to see what you all think. As always, thank you for watching the video. This has been Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related. The Gen S community is over 7,700 strong and growing by the day, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.